Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd I wanted to talk very briefly About some of the adab or manners of Jumu'ah Of the Jumu'ah prayer So we want to take a look at some of the ahadith Of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some of the ahkam related to Jumu'ah. And the first hadith, of course, is, ha, it relates to, or one of the first mannerisms we need to be concerned with, is for Yomu Jumu'ah of taking a ghusl. And this hadith is going to illustrate for us the hukum regarding ikhtisal Yomu Jumu'ah. You know, what is the ruling regarding uh, washing oneself for the Jumu'ah prayer? An Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Man jaa minkum al-jumwa fal yagtasil Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim In this hadith Of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu The son, one of the sons of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma He said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whoever goes to the jumwa prayer then they should shower themselves. You know, they should wash themselves. This is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. A couple of things about this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. First, when the Prophet Ali al salatu wasallam said, "Faliyatasil." This, in the Arabic, he used "lam al amr," which is entering upon fi'l mudari, which lets us know that this is a command from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This in, in in linguistically, that this is illustrating for that this is a command, and as we've mentioned countless times in our darus uh, and in our lectures and our, our short uh, speeches and what have you, that al emr yufid al wujub, that whenever we hear something, we hear an ayat from the Quran, or we hear something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that denotes that it's a command. In the command form, in the imperative form, that means the asal of that, or the foundation, or the origin of that, is that it means that it's an obligation. So when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Faqimul Salat," this is a command. Allah is commanding us with prayer, with the salat, because it's in the imperative form. So here, this puts this in the imperative form because of uh, because of the lem there. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Whoever." Goes to Jumu'ah, men jaa minkum al Jumu'ah, whoever uh, goes to Jumu'ah, or whoever is, uh, is going to go to the Jumu'ah prayer, then they should uh, wash themselves. Okay, so it shows us on the Zahir of the Hadith that it's, a, it's something that's an obligation. And there are many reasons, we don't need to get too in depth with the reasoning, of course we know it's Islam orders us with cleanliness, and the shara orders us with cleanliness and hygiene, and that's very important, and because Jumu'ah is one of our Eids, it's one of our holidays in fact you know, along with the two Eids Eid al-Fitr uh, and Eid al-Adha that Jumu'ah is like the, as the ulama they say, the Eid al-Isbu'i, it's the weekly holiday, because it's a very important time, it's the da- time when the congregational prayer where the imam addresses the community and urges the community, exhorts the community to righteousness, reminds them uh, reminds them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, encourages them to, to do good and, and so forth. So due to that fact, it's a very special occasion for the believers. And regarding some of the differences or the ikhtilaf of the ulama regarding this issue. So the ulama, they differ with regards to whether Jumu'ah is an obligation or it is mustahab. Is it an obligation upon us or is it something that is recommended? So from those who say that it's an obligation is the zahiriyah, of course, because the zahiriyah, they look at the apparent meaning of the uh, of the text, and they go with that. They don't really look for the wisdom or the illa or the reason for the 
uh, hukum or the the ahkam that is present in the uh, text. So the Vahidiya, they say that it's an obligation to uh, for those people going to Jumwa or those people who it's an obligation to go to Jumwa <coughs> that they should make ghusl. And they use also as evidence another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ghusl yomul jumwata, ghusl yomul yomul jumwati, wajibun ala kulli muhtanim. Where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said, the person going to the jumwah prayer, or uh, that it, you know, for every everyone who is 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 is, is um, for everyone who is mature and sane that's going to the Juma prayer, you know, and, and, and responsible, that they, it's an obligation. Meaning it's an obligation to wash yourself if you're going to the Juma prayer, as long as you're sane, as long as you're not a, a child, you're, you're in mature, you're, you're, uh, you've reached puberty. So using those two evidences, the Zahiriya say that it's an obligation. But majority of the ulama say that it is mustahab that it is recommended, meaning it is not an obligation, meaning if you don't make ghusl before you go to Jumu'ah, there's no sin. And so it's a good practice to do, to be safe, to make ghusl, yomu Jumu'ah, but if for some reason there is a difficulty, maybe you live in a place and it's free, there's nothing but ice cold water and it's a hardship upon, upon you, and you, are, you just took a shower last night and whatever, you're clean, you feel it's a great hardship, then you know, it's not going to be a sin upon you if you hold this this uh, with the jamur, and that's my my view is that it's not obligation, but I always try to make uh, try to practice doing it anyway. But we're talking about whether you leave it or not, whether you're sinful or not. So the Vahiriya hold that view, and those who follow either that madhab or uh, tend to follow that uh, a slub and fiqh to where just they look at the thahir of the, the nusus, you know, look at the apparent meaning of the text without looking at, at some of the other aspects, maybe the reasoning or the, the wisdom behind it. So, again, the majority of the scholars say it's an obligation, and then they use another hadith, they use uh, for evidence uh, for their saying that it's mustahab, they use the hadith, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, and this is the hadith of uh, Hassan on, Sam, on Samrata. Qal, Man tawadda yawmul jumwati fabiha wa ni'mat wa man aktasala fa ghuslu afdal. So here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever makes wudu for the, uh, for the Jumu'ah prayer, for the Friday prayer, then you know, there is, I believe it here, he, he's referring to alayhi salatu wasalam to reward, and I'm not really sure exactly the full meaning here. And then he says, So this is the shahid here. This is the main point, is at the end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, and whoever makes ghusl, whoever washes themselves, you know, makes the shower, then making a ghusl is better. And so the left that the Prophet ﷺ said, for ghuslu afdal, that ghusl, making the shower, is better. Letting us know that it is not an obligation, but this shows us that it is its best. So therefore, this is a sarif for the other hadith. You know, this takes the other hadith from being an obligation to something that's recommended. So that's a very beautiful faida there. Ruahu Khamsa. And this is uh, this this is one of the evidences there they use this. The Zahiriya, then they come back, and so there's a manakisha elmi. And I don't think this is the time and the place to get into all the, the details of what how the ulama, you know, this is how extensive the the, the issue is, we just want to know some basic fit to know how to practice. So the Zahiriya, they do come back 
and the, the argument goes back and forth and this is based on the ilm and this shows you the beauty of of knowledge it shows you the beauty of the ulama and how they look at these things from a point of knowledge not based on desires whereas we because of our our, our little knowledge and our little fit and understanding in the religion that we tend to resort to our opinions more than we do the text because we don't know the text like that we don't know the various ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and 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 how to use the how to make istidlal of the the nusus how to use that those evidences for 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 evidence you know and how how it's used as evidence all of those things that requires fiqh fideen and this again illustrates for us the beauty of the scholars and the beauty of scholarship and the scholar scholarly tradition in Islam and that we should encourage ourselves and our children and families to at least study a little bit that everyone should be you know the Islamic community should not be a community of ignorance it should be a community of knowledge because that's what the asl of Islam it, you know it's based on knowledge it's based on <clears throat> uh, you know the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know and understand the the religion. What is the first ayah revealed in the Quran? Iqra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra. Allah is ordering us to read. Reading the, the speech of Allah, reading the Quran. That's gaining knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fa'lam, annuhu la ilaha illallah wa sakfir li dhimbik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us. He says, Fa'lam. He says, then know. Uh, so again, knowledge. Know. Annuhu la ilaha illallah. That there is no God worthy of worship except the law and seek uh, forgiveness for yourself okay so Allah orders us first with knowledge in order to properly practice so it shows us that our community is a community based on knowledge and that we have to encourage one another to seek knowledge about these issues especially those issues that you're going to practice you need to know uh, knowledge of the wajib and that's the wajib knowledge so those are just some of the uh, things related to this issue without going further in depth with the manakisha uh, almiya that the the, 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 the in-depth discussion between the ulama. But let's look at some of the ahkam Sheikh Ali Bissam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned regarding this hadith. He said, number one, what we gain from this hadith is that the apparent meaning of the hadith shows that it's an obligation to make ghusl for Salat al Jumu'ah, that it is an obligation to make Ghusl uh, for Salat al Jumu'ah, and that shows us also that's a us that's the uh, the foundation for understanding the Quran and the Sunnah is that we look at the apparent meaning. We can't just ignore the apparent meaning. Absolutely not. That that's uh, you know unfortunately only the people of bid'ah and desires do that, where they're just going to look at their opinion and their view and what they believe is the hidden meaning. And so no, the asl is going back. This is the origin of istidlal, is going back to the apparent meaning. Go to the apparent meaning of the text, then you, you look at the other, you can look at the illa, you can look at the reason, you can look at the the uh, the sabab, you know, the uh, the reason, the illa, and, the, and, and those other aspects of istidlal, of how to look at the evidence. So the shaykh, he, he said that the, uh, the asl hamla hadith ala dhahirihi, he said the, the origin is, is uh, looking at this hadith, based on its apparent meaning. Uh, the second benefit the Sheikh mentioned is that he said that the that this evidence shows us that the washing yourself is for the prayer. So uh, you know that that the maqsud there is to prepare yourself for the prayer. And this differs also with the Dhahiri. And I, and I recall this, actually, one of our brothers, may Allah forgive us in him and bless us in him, but his understanding, because he was of the, he was following the madhab of the Dhahiriya on this issue, I remember talking to him many years ago in Yemen. Talib al-Ilm, mashallah, mufid. And he said to me, regarding uh, this issue, he said, you know, you can take shower as long as you take it in that day, meaning after the prayer, any time during the day, before Maghrib. And I said, wow, that sounds strange to me. And at that time, my knowledge was very little, so I, I couldn't even, you know, I just listened. If anything, I more took knowledge from him, if anything. But it, it sounded strange to me. And this is a beautiful thing Sheikh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, is pointing out. He said, this differs with the Zahiriya, you know, their madhab, 
in that who believe that the ghusl is is sufficient even after it's sal after salat because what we understand in, in majority of the ulama are unknown not that it's just it's just uh you know although it is ta'budi but not just that the you know they're looking at the maqsud what is the the reason and what's the intent behind this the intent is to prepare yourself and clean yourself for the prayer so then you should proceed the uh, uh, the prayer going to Jumwa with ghusl but the zahiriya they say no the max you know it, it says wajib ala you know ala kulli muhtalam ghusl yawm juma wajib ala kulli muhtalam that that you know as long as you fit that description then it's an obligation unto you to make a uh, ghusl during that day so regardless of whether it's before or after the salat that's the zahiriya those looking at the apparent meaning of the hadith and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but as the sheikh said that what's meant here is to prepare yourself for the Juma prayer another benefit the sheikh mentioned he said also there's evidence that it is better that the ghusl be right before leaving for the salat so instead of just making a ghusl maybe you made a ghusl after fajr or whatever to meet that need but it's better the closer you are to leaving to make uh jumwa according to the sheikh uh, his his view there and may Allah have mercy upon him I mean another benefit he mentioned is a very important benefit he said that this this hadith also illustrates the hikmah uh, and the the fact that it's legislated in, in the Sharia to whenever you're going to pray or a place of worship that you are in your best state meaning you are in your 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 clean smelling good looking good looking your best that you're going to communicate with your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala you're going to this is uh ibadah this is worship so that you should prepare yourself so this is another this is also something the sheikh took from this hadith and illustrated for us that it's important that when a person is going to a place where you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and so forth, that you should be in the best of uh, the best of appearance and the best of, of sense. And you, you, you should, of course, with the exception of the women, meaning that they should be clean in their body, but they should not perfume themselves. They should not beautify themselves. So that's very important for us to, to distinguish that, that, uh, that everyone should be clean everyone should be you know doing their best to have a good uh, to present present themselves good because you're going before your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're going to one of the best places the most beloved places to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the masjid and the places where allah is remembered and worshiped however of course the sharia makes those exception and makes taqyid you know it, it restricts it to as far as beautifying yourself outwardly and stuff like that that's for the men reserved for the men and also regarding this the sheikh mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ يَا بَنِي يَا بَنِي آدَمَ خُذُوا زِينَتُكُمْ زِينَتُكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ O uh, son of Adam to uh, Beautify yourselves, you know, at when going to the places to to pray, going to the masajid, going to the places where you worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that is also evidence that you should beautify yourself, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has ordered that in the Quran. Another benefit that the Sheikh mentioned is that whoever wants to go to the prayer that this is a this is addressing these hadith are addressing those people who want to go to salat juma as for those people the person who's a traveler and the person uh you know who did not intend to go to juma uh, is excused from going to juma and the day of juma comes it is not in order for them to to do that of course you should always strive to be clean but 
he, he's letting us know that this hadith, as far as the ahkam shari, that it is not an uh, obligation, nor is it necessarily legislated that a person who is not intending to attend the Juma prayer for reasons that there makes them excusable for it, from it, that they do not have to make this ghusl. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Those are just some of the ahkam pertinent to ghusl yom al-jumu'ah. And in the next sitting, we will talk about uh, the ruling regarding speaking uh, during the salat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.